Melford and District Museum. My name is Brittany and today we are going to be taking a tour through the early settlement days here in Melford, Saskatchewan. Before we begin our tour, I would like to introduce you to this large brick building we call the Powerhouse. The Powerhouse was built in 1913 and its main purpose was to bring power to the town of Melford. On October 10, 1913, at approximately 10.30 p.m., the Powerhouse generated its first electrical current. The powerhouse was generated by two huge diesel engines. By 1919, electrical rates within Melford were priced at 14 to 17 cents per kilowatt. In August of 1929, Canadian Utilities LTD was granted the right to sell power to Melford citizens for the next 20 years. In 1950, the plant was dismantled, and in the early 1950s, the structure was taken over by SAS Power. Today, it is currently owned by the city of Melford. On the side of the powerhouse, we have five murals, painted by Gordon Bland in 2013. These murals show a visual representation of the progression here in Melbourne. The first mural shows the fur trade and the development of Stony Creek. It is important to note that this area was first known as the Stony Creek Settlement and was located slightly south of Melford on Highway 6. Melford's first founders were Reginald and Mary Beatty, who homestead here in 1884. Many people wonder how Melford got its name. Well, since Mary was the first woman to settle in the area with her husband, she had the privilege of naming the town. So, she named the town after her hometown, Melfort, Scotland. The second painting describes the railway coming through Melfort. Next is the appearance of a typical one-room school found in the area. The fourth painting shows the development of agriculture in Melfort and surrounding area. And finally, the last mural represents commercial development in the area, including the historic post office, which was built in 1913 and still stands on Main Street today. Our first stop in our village tour is the Bennett House. The Bennett House was home to Mary Jane and Alexander Bennett, who homestead here in 1902. The homestead was donated to the museum by James Bennett in 1973, originally located in the Pathlo area, and was the initial step in starting the museum. Although an original building, the exterior of the Bennett House had deteriorated, and in 1990 poplar logs were installed using the same tongue and groove method of the original house. The Milk House was also donated to the museum in 1973 along with the Bennett House. This small log building was built into the ground and acted as a walk-in refrigerator for milk, cream, and baked goods. Inside are various butter churns, cream separators, and a butter press. Our next building is the grist mill. Grist mills, back in the day, were typically community-owned and used. It was the place you would go to turn your grain into flour. Our grist mill was built to display a variety of different grinding implements that turn grain into flour. A tip from back in the day, if you wanted good flour for baking, you had to let the flour sit for at least 10 months. In the fire hall, you will find a variety of coal and wood burning stoves, kerosene heaters and gas heaters. As well, there is a collection of fire extinguishers, information on firefighters, and images of the Big Broadway School fire. We also feature the Fairy Glen fire cart, which would have been pulled by two men instead of horses. The fire cart was pulled by men and not horse, as it took too long to harness up the horses and get to the fire. If you are wondering where settlers would have gone to get something fixed, you're in the right place. This here is our blacksmith building. Originally a two-story building located on 209 Burroughs Avenue West, this blacksmith shop belonged to Charlie Dorr and his assistant Angus McLean in 1902. The building came to the museum in 1973. 
This is our real estate building. Back in 1906, this original building doubled as a real estate building and a land claims office and was originally run by Reginald Beatty and Robert Wood. The building was initially located on the south end of Main Street in 1906 and became an insurance office of Wes Aikenhead. It was moved to the museum in 1976. Our next building belonged to Frank Dean, the town barber. Frank started cutting hair in Melford in 1922 till he retired in 1959. The building is original to Melford and was located on Broadway South. It was moved to our museum in the late 1970s. As we continue on with our tour, we will approach the South Melford Post Office. The post office was run by James and Elizabeth Armstrong from 1902 to 1928. It was then run by their son until 1957. The building was located in the resource area and came to the museum in 1975. In the early 1900s, it was common for multiple businesses to run out of one building to save time and money. The post office here also acted as a general store. This here is our Dr. Shad building. It was built in 2015 in honor of Dr. Shad, who was a doctor in the Melford area from 1904 to 1915. Inside the building, you can learn more about the history of medicine and the doctors who first settled in the area, including Dr. Spence and Dr. Hutchinson. The cupola belonged to the Greek Orthodox Church, built in 1917 in the resource area. The church was obtained by the museum in 1974. Unfortunately, the structure deteriorated and in 1997 it was dismantled. The cupola, however, was preserved and now sits beside the Mescona church and the doctor's office. Welcome to the Mescona St. Paul's Anglican Church. This original building was built in 1906 and stood in its location in Mescona till 1997 when it was moved to the museum grounds. The Trail family were the first founders of the Mescona area, and the Cree word for trail is Mescona. Our next stop is the Rothwell School, an original building over 120 years old, which used to be situated on the 44 Trail, approximately one mile east of Clemens. The school was built in 1898 on the corner of Benjamin Rothwell's land and remained there until the late 1990s when it was moved to the museum. As we continue down the boardwalk, I would like to draw your attention to this open space. Our museum is currently working on plans to install a new building, a Chinese cafe and laundry. Our final stop on the tour takes us to this large building, which we like to call the General Store. This is not an original building and was built on site in 1992. Inside the building is separated into four spaces, a simulated general store, a decades room, a small dentist's office, and a feed and seed area. This concludes our village tour. We hope next time you'll join us as we explore agricultural history, machinery, and more new buildings.